the ego, um, I really want to talk about the Murata uh, interview because he said something or uh, sh shined a light on something that was uh, really interesting. And I never knew that it went that deep. Where um, here, when you ask him, you know, why did, Khan, well, by the way, uh, Murata, for those of you who don't know, um, works at the Kodokan. He's, uh, with, um, what's, uh, he is in the museum of the Kodokan. He's uh, always there. He is eighth degree black belt. So he's not a Kozen judoka like the others. Um, so you asked him, why did the Kodokan dislike professional fights? And uh, it was somewhere around the lines of uh, when you're, you know, you're bringing glory to yourself. Uh, at the same time, uh, this is not for money. This is for making, you know, yourself and others better. Uh, competing against each other with those techniques is fine. But getting money from that is completely different from the goals of judo. I think Kano Sensei had this in mind. Therefore, he was not thinking of it become professional to become professional but purely saw it as a way of education thus money was not allowed so here it tends to open up quite a few uh like for example um when you're talking about you know you don't fight for money you don't you're basically uh, you know to be a better person etc uh this is goes this goes against everything that's happening right now even with the olympics um, the titles, um, you know, money. For example, the, uh, another interviewee where he says that in, in Kosen Judo, it's only team because we, so we sacrifice ourselves for the team. This isn't about the individual, it's about the team. So here you see an, a very different uh, perspective of how they see things. Like, if I'm, like I'm not a professional competitor, but uh, you see it that it's all about education uh, and like very different to what happened, say recently. Like recent, what happened recently, like with the hope with the jujitsu and the little fight that happened backstage. This didn't happen overnight. This happened with someone that's uh, constantly you know, bragging about their age, how many people he beats, constantly talking about the people that he's gonna beat, showing his house, his cars, um, and also like it's a whole different like. This is the thing. What I wanted to say was, I'm sorry, I got a little bit lost. Um, judo really made it very clear that before anything else, everything that you do, if there is no respect, it should not be done. Yeah. Uh, mutual uh, welfare and benefit for both and respect and also uh, making yourself and the society better and really emphasizing on that uh, really, judo grew in a different way. So here, for example, we see when Nakai told you that culturally it's different, and that's one of the great biggest examples. So my opinion, uh, judo grew in this particular aspect. Yes, there are a lot of techniques that were deemed too dangerous because you know there's no fun in ripping someone's ACLs and crippling them for a year or you know whatever. Uh, even in Kano's days, like surgery was not a, a thing like today for ACLs and ligaments or whatever, but um, it really shows, like, judo, I'm, in my opinion, that's the best thing that it, it did that, you know, before everything else, it's respect because, you know, you don't want to have your role models behaving this way or you don't want yourself, you know, becoming a terrible person through this particular uh, discipline. And that, in my opinion, really, you know, especially what, what happened last night, uh, in my opinion, really you know, hit the hammer, hit the nail uh, on the head. Like Kano Sensei really did that. And I'm glad that to see it evolve, even like on social media, on the, like how they conduct themselves during tournaments, Olympics or world championships, whatever. And they it's still based all on that. And I'm very, I'm actually very happy that judo still abides by that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I think that that was, I'm happy that Kano did that. And, and it's sad that it's died in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's not completely dead, but it is a dying breed because it doesn't breed money. There's yourself, yeah. Pedro Valente, all these great people. Like they call him the philosopher for a reason. Like Henner, what he's doing for self-defense and, you know, the little children. Obviously it didn't die out, but, you know, you're giving the, a, a platform for people to really evolve and the, 
wrong direction, basically. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, I, I think there's a reason why judo has been cohesive for 140 years, you know. I'm not one of those who say, who believe that, you know, actually a friend of mine made a point the other day and he read my book. He's like, he, he, I, his only criticism of the book was he didn't really enjoyed it. And he had something to the extent that, you know, perhaps I'm a little overly idealistic about martial arts as a means of education. I'm like, what do you mean by that? I'm like, well, martial arts are like religion. They don't necessarily make you a better person. They can, but they don't 100% make you a better person, which I agree. Like, it's true. Religion does that. It can make you, it can improve on your life. And I've seen religion make people worse too, right? And I've seen that, 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 that happen in martial arts as well. I've seen that happen. I think I've seen jujitsu change people's lives completely. I know it's changed mine. And I've seen people, the better they get at jujitsu, the worse they become as human beings. Like, I'm not joking here. Like, I would like to correlate technical progress with intellectual and maturity. I don't correlate those two anymore. Like I, what we saw last night is an example of this. Those are two of the greatest grapplers in history and they're basically children. I say this, I don't want to disrespect them, you know, but they're acting like children. This is like, they're like, they're in high school. I'm in high school. I want to get attention. I want to be popular. For me to be popular, I have to do things that draw attention. And there's no, I can't imagine like, I mean, I can see judokas doing that perhaps after an event. I think that's possible but I can't see the Federation not doing anything about it. You know, we, I've seen cases. I've seen cases of like judokas doing horrible things. A friend of mine who's a judoka in Brazil just sent me an article of a guy who was like, he was a judo coach and like raped multiple of his young students. Like it's, it's, it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but huge, when, once they find out, obviously they're like, yeah, you're gone. Yes. Yeah, so my, my point is the higher authorities do something about it because they will not accept that in the culture. Like when Gordon Ryan wins at ECC and the first thing he does is give the crowd a middle finger. Like, have you won an Olympic gold medal in judo or a judo world title? And the first thing you do is flip the middle crowd, the, the crowd with your middle finger. I can almost guarantee you they're going to strip you of your title. I don't know, but my guess is they're going to strip you from that Olympic gold medal, right? To send everyone else a message. We're not going to tolerate that here, but it's tolerated in jujitsu, especially in the professional environment you know, ADCC, the other professional events that we saw last night, that's tolerated. IBJJF would not tolerate that because I, I say what you want about IBJJF, but they model themselves after the Kodokan, after the International Judo Federation to a large extent. And it's why they're so successful. Yeah. Uh, allow me to interrupt. There was this one guy, uh, I saw him, like, he was doing, <laughs> he won and he was doing like flips and cartwheels and, and then the referee like uh, caught him and he was like, hey, you, <laughs> you lost. And, and that's been a recent development because when I started training, they wouldn't do that. When I started training, I mean, if you look at footage of jiu-jitsu tournaments in the 90s, you will see the referees eating pizza on the mats. They're refereeing while they're on their phone. Like early 2000s, they're on their cell phone given point. Like it's – I'm not joking here. You can, If you look hard enough, you're going to find guys eating pizza. I've seen it. People eating hot dogs on the mats while refereeing. But there's been an enormous change. It's become – like if you watch IBJF tournaments today, they're like the Olympics. I, I watched the world championship and I, I have seen the Olympics on TV and I'm like, looks the same to me. You know, IBJJF referees uh, should wear a suit like uh, IJF referees. That would make the whole thing look a lot more, you know, like, hey, we're, yeah, it's far more presentable. So they do in the, in the bigger tournaments, they, the small tournaments, they have a shirt on, but if you, yeah, like the black one. Yeah. But they, if you go to like the big ones, they wear a suit and a tie. So it's, they do, I mean, like in the six, like in 67, when they formed the Guanabara Federation, they were copying judo. They're doing, IBJJF does the same thing now on a global scale. And I think it's working. I think they're doing a good job. I've become far more supportive of them. I think that if jujitsu is, my dream is for Brazilian jujitsu to become the most practiced martial art in the world. Forgive me, judokas, but like we're in competition with you guys in that regard. I think judo is still ahead. But I think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has the potential to surpass Judo in the next 10, 20 years. You allow like all these techniques, like leg grabs, leg locks, you, you have a better chance if you yeah. like, if they conduct themselves, basically. And, and they have so, a more arsenal. As, and because yeah. of that, like, it, it does broaden the spectrum. But I would like to see that. But if Jiu-Jitsu is to become that most practiced martial art, it has to be more like Judo and not like more of these professional events which are really making the sport look bad. They don't make jiu-jitsu look good. People think it looks good, but it's, it's making us look terrible. The host of the event took a screenshot and then said, like, hey, if you want to see it, in, uh, like, in, like, 
all of it, like go subscribe to the channel, like go to the website. Yeah, I'm supporting it. They're, they're posting it. Yeah. It's, it's a coordinated effort to maximize audience at any cost. Like, and, and the problem with the prof professionalization of jujitsu, and I'm, and I hate saying this because it sounds like I'm some kind of, you know, saint and I'm not a saint. I do like money. I'm not perfect. But I think there is a hierarchy of values. I do believe in that. Whether I follow, better, like let's strive to be better. That's that's the whole point. So whether I follow that in my personal life is a different story. But I understand that there is a hierarchy, right? And and the problem, and I think this is an effect more of, you know, the world in general is that money and popularity are the ends in itself. There's nothing else but money and popularity. So as long as you're making money, and being popular at the end, everything's permissible including if you're Pablo Escobar, which people look up to. <laughs> like anything is, Kim Kardashian, anything is okay as long, and Gordon and Andre are reflexes of that. Like they, it's, they know they're going to sell, their DVD sales just went up and that's all that counts. So, I mean, what's the future of, what's the, the, the future of jujitsu? I'm sorry about that. You know, I think this is going to keep happening because younger generations are watching those two and they're going, that's what I have to do. And this is why I worry that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will die because if these guys win the war, Jiu-Jitsu is going to die as an army. 